Hello, so um, in this problem, I just wanted to go over the problem that we did in class uh, where we had um, uh, this, this, this slope problem, if you remember. Um, let's go ahead and set it up. Uh, basically, you had um, a slope here um, with an angle of uh, 15, oops, 15.5 degrees, and you had a mass M2, M1, and then a pulley connecting the two. Um, and I gave you in class that the acceleration was 1.5 meters per second squared um, down, where basically it was um, uh, the, the, the mass was accelerating in this direction. So that was acceleration. Um, and then we were going to go ahead and try to solve that. Um, so. Let's go ahead and uh, set this up. Uh, first of all, um, let's let's do the easy one. Um, I don't think it's how I did in class, but let's do it this way. So for M1, we're going to use this set of coordinates, x and y like that. Um, you can see immediately um, that there are no there's no forces in the x direction. Let's do a free body diagram of M1. pretty straightforward basically there's the tension force that's pulling it up and the gravity that's pulling it down okay um, that's that's the easy one so um, for M2 there are a couple of things going on gravity of course pulling straight down as well so this, I should put a one there and a two there. Um, uh, the tension is actually along the slope. And then the normal force, of course, is perpendicular to the surface, okay? So um, the surface is, um, you know, the surface goes uh, like this. And so the, the normal force goes like this. Okay, so that's, that's the normal force if I were to just draw on the figure. Okay, so um, so what are we going to do with it? Well, again, we set that up. Um, we can go ahead and start doing our Newton's laws. Um, so again, let's start with mass one. So um, again, there's no forces in the x direction, so I'm not even going to bother with the, the forces in the x direction. But let's look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. Um, that's equal to the force of tension, which is in the positive y direction, minus the force of gravity, which is in the negative x direction. Um, and again, that's equal to the mass of mass one times the acceleration of mass one. Um, and that's all we have for the for the for the first mass. That's about all we can do for right now. Um, let's go to mass two. Now again, mass two is a little funny. So with mass two, we have to set up a different coordinate system than we did for mass one. For mass two. We're going to set up this this um, tilted coordinate system, where the x direction is going to go along the slope, and the y direction is going to go perpendicular to the slope. And again, we can have these two different um, uh, coordinate systems because what we're actually doing is we're actually solving that we're solving um, the problem of mass two and mass one separately. Basically, we're solving these separately, and then afterwards we'll go in. And, um, and combine them together. But we really want to think of them as two separate problems that just happen to have um, uh, things in common. So that's going to help us really get this, get this down right. Um, to be able to do mass two, uh, and realizing that this is our x and y coordinates, we realize that the force of gravity is not going, so, so the, the, the normal force is going along the y direction. The, the, um, the tension force is going along the negative x direction. Gravity isn't going along either. So we're going to have to break this up into components where this is FG2X, or FG2Y, and this is um, FG2X, all right? Um, and it turns out that this is just always true, that this is theta, this is that 15.5 degrees, all right? Um, and so from that, we can see that, um, uh, just as a side note, um, FG2X is equal to um, you, you notice that, uh, that, that this one is the opposite of that angle, and so it's, it's going to be FG 
sine of theta and fg to y is going to equal fg cosine of theta. Okay, so that's kind of an aside about how this is working. And I'm sorry, it's a little scattered. I just only have so much room on this page. Um, so now we're ready to actually do our, um, our, our Newton's laws. So let's look in the x direction first. So some of the force in the x direction, we got minus the force of tension, okay? Um, and then we've got uh, the, the normal force isn't in the x direction, but there is a component of the force of gravity, and that's in the positive x direction. So this is Fg 2x, and that's equal to the mass of the 2 times the acceleration of x in the 2 direction, or 2 in the x direction, however we want to call that. And let's, let's change that to um, 2 in the x direction. Okay. We can also do y. Um, that's just equal to uh, the normal force, which is going in the positive y direction, minus fgy. And that's equal to mass acceleration in the, the y direction, um, but that's just zero because it's not moving in the y direction. Now it turns out this equation is going to be um, really important um, when we do friction. But for right now, it's actually not going to help us that much at all. So. All right, what are we going to do with these two equations? Well, we have these two equations. Um, uh, we need to make some, some realizations. First of all, is that we need to realize whoops, that the, um, oh, uh, we need to realize, whoa. We need to realize that um, something about the, the acceleration, which is that, um, the acceleration, if it's going down in the for mass one, it's a, the the acceleration is negative for mass one. So we need to go ahead and put that negative back in here. So let's put a negative around a one, and for the second mass, it's in the negative x direction. So this acceleration is negative as well. So there we go, um, and that's going to become important uh, when we actually try to solve this. Um, the other thing to notice is, of course, that the tensions are the same in both of them. Uh, the force of tension is basically the same in both parts of that wire, which is important when we finally go to solve it. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to solve this. Um, this is going to involve some nasty algebra. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first solve mass 1 for the force of tension. So if I go ahead down here, um, so let's bring this equation down here. Um, and rewrite it. The force of tension is equal to the force of gravity plus, uh, actually that's a minus, um, minus m1a. Okay. And I've dropped the um, subscript because I know that the acceleration a1 is the same as a2x. Again, those are the same. So that's that. And then I'm going to also then just plug in uh, what fg is. Fg is just m1g minus m1a. Okay, so that's um. Let's just stop there for now, and then let's do th now. Let's bring down the x equation here, and we get that um, the force of tension, if I solve for that, is equal to uh, Fg2. So this is Fg1. Fg2 plus m2a, and if you're not following it, just try to try to do that work on your own. Um, and that's about as far as we need to go for that one, uh, uh, except that we'll go ahead and rewrite this as m2g plus m2a, that's a force of tension. Okay, let's set those two equal to each other. We get um, it's because they're both equal to FT and the FTs are equal, so we can just say that M1G minus M1A is equal to M2G plus M2A. And if we go over, he go over here where we have some more room, um, I'll factor out an M1 and uh, on each side, so I'll say this is M1G minus A. Now factor out an M2 on the other side, M2G 
plus a, and then go ahead and solve for m1, which is what we're trying to solve. So m1 is just equal to m2 times g plus a divided by g minus a. Now we can go ahead and actually put our numbers in. Um, let's remember what m, oh, except for one thing. Uh, I'm sorry. I've totally forgot about my angle. When I wrote down fg 2x up here, fg 2x, whenever I brought that down, I didn't actually write fg 2x. What I wrote down was fg. fg 2x is, is actually m2g times the sine of theta and then plus m2a. So sorry about that, I totally, um, I totally missed my uh, sine theta, so let's go ahead and plug that back in. Um, so, so anyway, this should be sine theta, mg, m2g sine theta. We'll go ahead and put that in there. And so then uh, if we come over here, um, I should go ahead and, uh, and erase that guy, and then put in g sine theta plus a. There we go. Okay, now when we finally try to solve for m1, oops, um, that's equal to m2 g sine of theta plus a divided by g minus a, which is equal to, if I get my calculator out um, and plug in my numbers of 19.5 kilograms, Uh, 9.8 meters per second squared times sine 15.5 plus 1.5 divided by 9.8 minus 1.5. Um, that's all meters per second squared. Um, I just want to point out that our g is actually 9.8 in this case. Um, a lot of people are getting confused about that, thinking that g should be minus 9.8. G is never minus 9.8. G is always 9.8. The acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8, um, or minus g is the better way to think about that. Um, but um, but uh, g is always um, is always 9.8 here. Um, so let's point that in minus oh, sorry sine 15. All right minus. Uh, 1.5 and we get a number of um, 2.43 um, kilograms uh, which hopefully is correct um, sure um, let's try it. Let's just try that one more time. Make sure that I have the right number. It seems like everything I did is correct. Um, go ahead and check it out and see if you get the same answer. If you don't, please uh, correct me or maybe even post a comment on the YouTube video to let us know what I did wrong. Uh, but um, that's what I'm getting. Uh, I hope that was useful and at least gives you the rough idea about how to, um, to, to solve these types of problems. Um, Good luck, and I'll see you in class.